everyone. Today I want to talk to you about SRB Miner. Uh, they have put a new option. They've been developing it since early June, but the latest version has a lot of promise to it. And I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention so they could possibly use it. Uh, it started back, actually back, if we look on their GitHub page here, back in June 2nd when he added the algorithm CASPA for CASPA coin. Uh, it is for CPU or GPU mining, not really CPU, it's really made for GPU mining and it's core intensive, unlike um, ET hash or ETC hash or auto Lycos, which is memory dependent on a GPU. We'll get to that in a second. So the initial ad adding of this algorithm to SRB miner was June 2nd. If we scroll on up here, June 13th, he did a performance increase on it. He worked on it a little bit more, also lowered the power consumption of CASPA as well on uh, RDNA 2 GPUs. Remember, this is only for AMD GPUs as well. Uh, SRB Miner does not work on NVIDIA cards. So if we keep going up even more, the next revision, 16 days ago, which is version 0 0.98, they added dual mining modes. So now you can do a memory dependent algorithm such as ET hash, ETC hash, or auto Lycos, which is ergo, and cast with dual mining at the same time. Perfect. Uh, it had a few little bugs, and he's been working on it, and he actually sent me a preview version the other day that I helped test to make sure everything worked good, and it did. So if we come on up here, uh, 11 days ago, he was still working on the dual mining, and um, he also added curve hash. Okay, cool. Didn't even realize that. But, um, yeah, he's still refining it a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Five days ago, version 1.01, .01, he also added in an auto-tune mode for dual mining. Uh, double dash GPU dash auto dash tune one to enable it and that worked beautifully I love his auto tune feature then the final version that just came out now yesterday added uh, he's also doing it with heavy hash now too actually auto lycos and heavy hash and so he's doing a lot of dual mining he's adding in um, possible fixes for our DNA that wouldn't create the DAG there was a issue with the dual mining, for some reason, on some people's like mine, the first GPU would never generate the um, ET hash DAG, and it would just always fall off no matter what you did. It was some sort of bug in the Linux operating system that he had to work around a little bit. But yes, now it's fixed. It perfectly works. Let's jump over to Hive OS. And right now, I've been running this probably for, well, I just rebooted it 19 hours ago. But I've been mining it about five days now and perfectly stable except for me tweaking a little bit of things here and there. As you can see, this is a full rig of 6600 XTs and we have pretty much the same hash rate that we did on ET hash or Ethereum. Uh, there is a little bit of a drop off. Like this was my really good card. That was actually getting literally 34.02 mega hashes a second. They, he doesn't quite get the exact same mega hash as Team Red Miner. Um, if we look up here, I'm getting 260.6 mega hash. Uh, can I go back into my stats that far? Let me see here. Where's ET hash? ET hash. I don't know. I want everything. Not just one. Oh, there we go. 261, 262, 264. Okay. I started switched over to SRB Miner right around here, about five, six days ago. Before that, on Team Red Miner, just on Ethereum, I was doing 264.1 mega hashes with these cards. Now, with the dual mining, it did drop ever so slightly. It went from 264 to 260.6, 261. I lost like three mega hash off the whole rig. Big deal. Now, the same deal as two. This is a core intensive algorithm, so you do need to expect to pull more power from your GPUs. But it's not nearly as bad as when you were doing either um, ET hash and Toncoin, which, by the way, as of recording now, that contract is done. There is no more Toncoin mining. That is now truly a proof of stake coin. Or also, that is still currently running to this day, is dual mining Ethereum and Alephium. And that definitely takes even more power. This doesn't take that much power, actually, because on just Team Red Miner doing Ethereum, I was using about 
about 550 watts on this rig. I had it really nicely tuned. And you can see me playing with it. It came up a little bit. Uh, here I tuned it up. This is where I started playing with the auto-tune feature. Uh, I got my hash rate up a lot more for only 668. Yeah, no, another 12, 15 watts. That's it. But it's been fairly steady since then. So we went from 550 to 705. So we went up like 155, 160 watts per the whole rig. And you can actually trust these wattage readings because... Normally, you wouldn't trust it because it's AMD cards. This is on an Octominer. This is reading directly from the power supply. So this is a true reading. Um, it does spike up a little bit to 714, but on average, for the whole rig, only an extra 150 watts. Um, we get 99% of the hash rate of Ethereum. Plus, it definitely needs some core on here. I'm getting about 132, 128 mega hashes on each one. And these are only 6600 XTs. I haven't tried it on 67s. I haven't tried it on 68s yet. Uh, normally, these will run about 54 watts. Now, they're running about 65 to 68 watts. Um, you can kick the core up more, uh, but then you got to kick up the voltage on the core as well. I wanted to keep it more around efficiency. You probably can get close to 150 mega hashes on the secondary algorithm, but I didn't really didn't want to push it that hard. Now, you can save a little bit more power if you drop it down a little bit to like 1300 core on these and maybe 670. You'll save another 10 watts, but at that point, you start really losing some of your um, Ethereum hash rate. So this seems to be the sweet spot for 6600 XTs. Now, when it comes to mining it, if we go to miningpullstats.stream, you can see there's only one place to mine it right now. Um, it's been developed for a few years. I'm not doing a deep dive. I honestly don't even really know that much about Casper coin. I just like, oh, okay, cool. Something new to mine. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a bag of it. So this is the only place you have. And if we switch over to my worker, we can see here, um, it reports within about 95 to 98% of your actual hash rate. Like I normally have 1.035 giga hash for these. And I've seen it bounce up to right about one giga hash you can see my 12 hour rating is just under one giga hash so it's really close actually whoa sorry 24 hours one giga hash there you go uh it does fluctuate a little bit up and down but you can see in five days i've already been paid twenty two thousand three hundred and seventeen. i still have a balance and they pay out like once every 12 hours and this changes like every few minutes type of deal on their getting started page you can see the server for either germany canada russia or hong kong I'm in Delaware, United States, and the Canada one is the one I'm using perfectly, no problems whatsoever. Um, server IPs, I prefer using this instead of the IPs. It seems to work better in the miner uh, port and, or your SSL port. Pool has variable difficulty. These are the three miners that currently support it. They have their own miner built into it. Uh, if you're running Windows, I guess, or something like that. Um, SRB miner, which is right here. And BZ Miner is for people who are using NVIDIA cards. Uh, this video will not entail that at all. It does give you some sample command line to get started. The other thing I wanted to highlight too, I believe this coin's actually only been mineable for a little while, even though you can see the block height is astronomical, but I believe this, I think this coin only has like what, one or two second block times. It's extremely fast. That's why this number is already so high as it is. So here they are on CoinGecko. You can see, yeah, it's not worth much right now, but it also literally just opened up exchange and had price discovery, I guess. Uh, what, May 24th? That's it. That's as far back as it goes. And it had its quick little spike as it started, but even still to, what is this, Saturday, July 16th, the time I'm recording this, it's still riding above its initial price discovery. It's great. So this shows that it might be a good project to invest a little bit of time and a little bit of hash rate into, see if you can get yourself a fairly sizable bag. It's a very easy coin to mine, and it really doesn't take that much power, uh, especially considering it's summer at the time I'm making this video, and you don't want to run really any core intensive algorithms. But even with my rigs out in the crypto shed, out in the 90 plus degree heat, the 6600 XCs, they don't care. If I switch back over to them, look at them. I, I mean, the memory temperatures are the worst. It's 72C. I'm only running the fans 
Most of them are 50%. This one's kicking up to 81 because the memory's running a little warmer on it. But even the Octominer fans, 60%. This one always runs 10% higher. It's really, it handles the heat perfectly fine. And we can see, it's hot out there right now. Intake of 38C, exhaust of 40C. It's not bothering these cards at all. So go ahead and get yourself a bag of this and hold it, and maybe it'll be worth something someday. So thanks for watching. That's all I'm going to get into with this video. Everyone take it easy, and I'll catch you on the next video.